up in every week. Quiet as it's kept, artists from Greater Hartford and Connecticut have made their mark on Hollywood. Norman Lear, Katherine Hepburn, Anika Noni Rhodes, Eric LaSalle. Now, Joe Young, a Connecticut artist and an entertainment entrepreneur, is hosting a networking event October 13th in Windsor to celebrate Hartford's history in Hollywood and its future. He and historian Wendy Pollock are here to tell us much more in our second segment. We'll talk about a surge in enrollment and interest in journalism schools across the country. Is this part of the Trump effect? Adam Chiara, an assistant professor at the University of Hartford, is here to discuss about this emerging trend and what it means. And then we'll wrap things up with news that a venerable community action organization is receiving a $1.5 million grant to tackle the opiate addiction problem here in the area. Hadi Lubetkin from the community renewal team in Hartford. CRT is here to discuss the first Hartford's contribution to Hollywood. Joe Young to my far left. You've been on before. You're a regular yes, contributor. Sir. Yes, Wendy sir. Pollock, a historian. We are matching. They told us we're matching with our tie. You, you got the memo to make sure we are color coordinated. <laughs> Joe did not get the memo. Right? Yeah, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> I'm throwing you off. So you always have something going, Joe. Yes, you have an event here to kind of celebrate Hollywood's history. For yes. folks who don't know, you've been a director, producer, mm -hmm. writer, cartoonist. Yes. You're also involved with uh, Maurice Starr's organization, the uh, senior executive with his, or, you know, his operation. Mm. So what's the genesis behind this issue with Hollywood and Hartford? Well, wanted to uh, celebrate the uh, people past and present who've made an impact in motion pictures. Mm. You know, I'm working with Bernadette Stannis now on a new show. She's coming to Hartford. Thelma from Good Time. Thelma from, those from folks, Good Time. Right? Motivational act actress. Uh, a lot of folks had a crush on uh, Thelma. Joe, we all, we day, all. Right? <laughs> Let's we be real honest about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They still do. Yeah, yes, yes, they do. But she'll be here. <laughs> and she's doing some dynamic stuff, traveling with her books. and. So she's writing now. What is she doing? Writing and still writing performing? Writing books and still acting. There's Thelma. So there she yeah, is yeah, now. Yeah, Back yeah. at, that's, she, that's a current picture. So, yeah. yeah, back in the day, she was, everyone had a crush on Jimmy Walker's sister, right? Yeah, J.J.'s yeah, yeah, sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some guys still do. Yes. Yeah. You, know, you know, we'll keep that quiet, but yeah, yeah some guys still do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're excited about the whole event. And uh, it's not just about uh, networking. We have Wendy here who, who you talk to, and we're going to give a history lesson on Hollywood to Hartford. Yeah. Well, history speaks of that now. Few realize that Norman Lear, the creator of... All in the family. Good I think, time. I think good Jefferson. times too, right? Jefferson, mm -hmm. an iconic uh, producer, mm -hmm. creator, mm -hmm. with a Weaver High graduate, yes. right? And he's yes. become an icon. Eric yes. LaSalle, yes. a Weaver High graduate, yes. a big star in mm -hmm. ER and coming to America. Mm -hmm. So there's a nice Anika Noni Rose we mentioned. I mean, there's yes. a real some interesting connections. Speak about his Catherine Hepburn, of course. So, yes. so, so what does well, it all so mean? He doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, who, uh, who, who, who am have, I missing? <laughs> we have many Hartford citizens who made it from Hartford to Hollywood, and these are some who have made it back home again. Uh, from Hollywood to Hartford. We speak of them mostly in our memories of who they were and how they contributed as actors and actresses. Who is your favorite? Oh, there's so many. Give me one. I guess, I guess I'd have to say Catherine Hepburn. Yeah, well, Saybrook, right? You know, Big star back in the day, right? Yes, and her father was a doctor at Hartford Hospital, and he did um, develop the Department of Urology. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And in Norman Lear's background, again, we Hartford kid, uh, mm -hmm. grew up. Did you ever meet Norman Lear? Do you know him I all? never yeah. did. And he, in fact, I really didn't see any of his shows because I was working then. Yeah. At that time in the evening, I worked second shift at Hartford Hospital. For but at the event stage, she got some surprises. Some people don't know some of the people who, some things that happened in Hartford. Okay. Well, um, Henry, uh, Marietta Canty. Okay. Worldwide uh, actress, world, well known. Um, she won an award for a rebel without a cause in the movie. Mm -hmm. And she made over 40 movies, but she always used to say, everybody used to ask her, why do you always play a maid? You always play a maid. She said, well, honey, I'd rather play a maid for 700 bucks a week mm. than be one for Ooh, $7 hello. a Reality, week. Reality, right? You need to get paid, right? <laughs> and and uh, Mary Phillips, she was a Broadway actress, and she lived with her mom, and he, she got married at her mother's house to Humphrey Bogart. Oh, really? Right here in Hartford. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Bogey. And um, there's just so many people who made so many contributions, and it's the young people that are carrying it on, like uh, Anika Noni Rose. Yeah, Bloomfield, and Eric, right? And Eric LaSalle. Right, talk about Joe. And they're carrying it on. Because in the beginning, it was really hard for a lot of the older people from the North End and the projects to make their way. And when they Why? did, 
Oh, by, I don't know. I guess they were just stuck in having to play certain parts. Mm -hmm. um, and so they stuck their foot in the door and to make way for the young people yeah. to and have Harper their And Harper wasn't chance. considered a hotbed until you no. have someone who breaks it, break right? Through. Then you break through, and all of a sudden right. people respect the area. Right. So, Joe, talk about some of the contemporaries now. Anika Noni oh, Rose well, from Bloomfield. Let's you, talk about her got, ascension. Yeah, well, I mean, I remember I did a program with... Uh, Maurice Starr, and she won the talent contest oh, when she was six day. years old. And she's gone on to do Dream Girls with Jennifer Hudson mm -hmm. and Beyonce, and the first Black Prince in the Princess and the Frog. Uh, but then there's guys from Bloomfield who's going to be at the event, like Jamie Lincoln. He's been on Blue Bloods and Blue other. My, that's, that's my show, Joe. You know, Blue Bloods my show. He'll be here in care. Hartford. He'll be here in Hartford. Uh, we have Richard Ferguson Hall. Uh, he's in West Hartford, but works in Atlanta. He's an executive producer and director at the Cartoon Network. His show breaks this month on TV. Mm. You know, so people like that, they're going to be there. So you want folks to network, to connect, and appreciate the history. And the mm. fact that if you have history like Harvard has, you also have, have a future, right? If you've done That's it in right. the past, you yeah. can do it in the future. And there are people who are contemporary, people who have been back in right. the day. It can happen here from Harvard. Yeah, Harvard's not, not an impediment to And not just on no. camera. There's also camera people, mm. voiceover artists, engineers, cinematographers, sound people that you'll be. We even have uh, uh, Sue Nelson. She's the executive director of SAG New England. She'll be here. Okay. SAG is for is screen artists? Un it's, it's screen a union. Actors. All right. So screen for folks who don't know what SAG is, right. right. Okay. So, yeah. so now... Um, this just for artists only? These are for folks who are in the know? Who? What's your target no, market? No, no, everybody. She's everybody. here. She's here to tell people stuff about Hollywood and Hartford that you wouldn't know. Okay. So there's dancing and there's music and there's networking. networking and we're giving away a bunch of awards and celebrating folks. Okay. Now for folks who want more information, there's a price tag on this too now. Give them the cost of this. Is, is How much? It's only 75. Okay. But you're getting all this history. You're meeting celebrities. And, you, you, you know, it's also going to help towards a production that's coming through Hartford. And what's really cool about it, we could have done it at a fancy hotel. We could have done it at a museum or uh, wherever. We decided to do it on the location where we're going to shoot in Hartford mm -hmm. at someone's house. But we're transforming it into a big, grand place to do it. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, now, when you produced your movie Diamond Rough, yes. you produced it here in Hartford. Yes, sir. Use mm -hmm. Hartford local talent. Yes, sir, you did. Speak about that, because you when uh, you put your money where, you, where your mouth is as far mm -hmm. as your production. You like to be locally based when you do your projects, like being here in Hartford. Yes. Why? Because you can go elsewhere to do these projects, well, I'm right? Emotional. I love Hartford. And, you know, a lot of times people leave and they don't do things here. Mm -hmm. And I decided, you know, if you look at my work, even my cartoons, it always has Hartford as a backdrop. You know, I've, I, I, you know, Hartford's been good to me and mm -hmm. I need to be good to Hartford. And we brought stars from all over the country to Harford. They're like proud to be from Drop Harford. a few names, Joe. Well, we, we had Star, you brought Fredro it. Star, we had Felicia Snoop Pearson from The Wire, mm -hmm. we had singer Freddie Jackson was in the movie, mm -hmm. and we used local people. Michael too, Collier, like the comedian. Michael Collier, right? mm -hmm. yep, and he's doing a big tour now, too. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been on HBO. Uh, we also had local people. I put Scott Haney in the movie. We had mm. you and, you know, the thing. I got cut, though. My, my no, not intentionally. My, my people in the interview floor. Like, he will be in Diamond Rough, too. I was, I was a natural out there, and I looked at the movie, and I got, I'm on the cutting room floor. No, you didn't get on the cutting room floor, and something dropped. It was tragic. Well, you know, we I got was, you next time, though. Well, that's what, see, we're on the record now, for. we're going to get on next time. We're going to get that cameo, because I'm looking at Hollywood, too. Truth Are you good at craft services? We're, we're thinking about putting you on craft services. What, what is craft services? We're the, we're the catering thing, where you can, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to get sued. We went on the record. Is that my role you have for you? Have you as a no, 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 we got to do something right. Do something. Done. No, we got to do something. We got to do something. I can play a street role. I can play the principal. I can do something. You know, I'm, we didn't I'm, write I'm the open. script. And he's already I'm got open. the, the I've, role. I've got to do things. I can do a love interest. You know what I mean? I just try to put it all out there. Spread it out there for you. He's diversified. He's diversified. Diversified. Before we leave, Bill Cosby makes big news. Speaking of entertainment arts, there are quick reactions to Mr. Cosby being convicted, sentenced for sexual assault. Incident happened 10 years ago, uh, iconic figure. He's been in Hartford on a number of occasions. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, what's the buzz in the industry about this case? It's just a tragic situation. I mean, a lot of people looked up to him, and hopefully the lessons that he instilled them still carries on, but it's just a tragic, tragic, tragic mm -hmm. situation. Any thoughts? Add yes, I agree. It's, uh, he inspired so many young people. And it was very philanthropic, yeah, right? Because yeah. I gave millions and millions of dollars to great causes. But uh, yeah. now let me ask you a question: Do you yeah. think the colleges should give the money back, or what do you think should happen? Or does Ooh, his name question. come off the building? That's a great question. I yeah. mean, uh, give the money back? I would say no.
if it's if, used if, if for it's good for a good person, purposes. you're going to help kids out. Does his money. name still stay in the building if it was named after? Uh, that's a tough one. I think you'd have to then say uh, yeah. no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you keep the money but take his name off. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's the bad, money right? Is, Hypocritical, the, right? The money can question. be put yeah, to good purposes. Yeah, the money can be put to good purposes, but uh, I think you have to have conversations about having the name on there because it brings disrepute to mm -hmm. situations. So. Mm. Uh, other issue, Artist Collective. We have 30 seconds. Local, wow. iconic yeah, program. According to the story, they're having serious financial issues, mm -hmm. may go bankrupt. Um, I think someone will probably save it, but your mm -hmm. thoughts on what's happened to what Dolly and Jackie McLean established in the North End of Hartford, a great cultural great. arts program. Iconic, great. right? Yes. We've got to get, yes. be, you know, get behind them. And Jimmy Green. Who, Jimmy Green, yeah, some of the great artists. Fantastic. So many kids came up and, and learned how to dance and play an instrument and were encouraged to blossom mm. in, you know, in the art forms. And it's, it would be awful if maybe, it couldn't maybe, continue. Maybe Joe's next movie, we can do a fundraiser and we can get some money we for the collection. We need to talk. Mm. We need to and I'll play that cameo yeah. role. That's I'll make a good sure idea. I'll get to the cutting room floor <laughs> this time around. Yeah. All right, folks, we come back. We'll talk about a surge. Thank you for your time, folks. Appreciate you. Thank you sir. We're going to talk about a surge in enrollment in journalism schools across the country. Is this part of the Trump effect? Adam Shire is here from UART. He's here to talk about what this means and uh, what the future holds for media and journalism. Remember to catch our show on your own time online, fox61.com slash Dan. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, too, back after this. This city is under serious distress. There are people in real need. My babe is not looking too good for me right now. Yeah, I think I got a visual. I still have a firefighter trapped in there. So I don't want to be here for the next aftershock. What do you mean the next aftershock? They could really use a miracle today. I just need you to know that I didn't give up. Okay. That I fought to the very end. See the latest styles and trends in home building and remodeling at the 2018 Parade of Homes, hosted by HBRA of Central Connecticut. Meet the builders and see the latest in new home design and features in both new and fully remodeled homes. The 21 homes featured include price levels to fit every budget, and every stop is an entry to win raffle prizes. Download the Parade Craze app or visit pohct.com to plan your parade today. And use discount code FOX61 for half-off tickets. Presented by Connecticut Lighting Centers and Vendor. I have two young boys. Uh, they are the highlight of my life. We appreciate how important life is and what motivates me as a professional is thinking about what it would be like for one of my clients to not be able to care for or to provide for their children and how that would affect me. That motivates me to do my absolute best for every client. Buckley, Wynn, and Parisi. Personal injury attorneys protecting families. And welcome back to the show. We're going to talk now about a surge in enrollment and interest in journalism schools across the country. Is this part of the Trump effect? Adam Shara here is an assistant professor at the University of Hartford to talk about this interesting trend. Washington Post, welcome back, Adam. Thank you, Sam. A regular contributor. So Washington Post had a big story about this sort of surge in media and some interesting numbers. You see University of Maryland had a 50% increase mm -hmm. in journalism applicants. Uh, Arizona State, 11%. Uh, Northwestern, 20%. 24%. You taught the folks locally. CCSU is up. Mm -hmm. Quinnipiac is up. Um, what, do, what do you make of this? What, what's happening over at Hartford, by the way? Well, I'll say, say overall for, yeah, overall for the, the national trend, it's very encouraging, isn't it? And I mean, I love to see this, that young people are interested again once in the craft of journalism. University of Hartford right now, we're pretty much at the numbers we, are, we normally see, but we're very hopeful. In fact, mm. we added a uh, sports media journalism program, too. It's hot not, right now. Yeah, right? not necessarily completely tied to politics, but again, we see this this trend. Um, you know, part of what we say when we say the Trump effect is I think what we're really saying is young people right now are more engaged with the political climate than ever, right? Yeah. And they, and they want to do something. And a lot of them don't know exactly what they want, like what to do, but they see journalism as a very noble profession. They right. see it as a way to have their voice heard and how to, to really put truth, you know, to uh, speak power to truth yeah. and to, to highlight some of these issues that are important to them. So I think that's really what we're seeing the drive with this, these new students that are coming in. It's coming at an interesting time in the industry, right? A time now when 
a lot of newspapers and TV, radio, they're shedding jobs, right? They're downsizing. So at a time when media is shrinking jobs, you're seeing a surge in interest. So that will put some pressure perhaps on some news managers, and that may change the whole news engagement challenge that media has, right? How do you reach young folks? Well, guess what? If they're more interested in getting involved in media, they'll have some solutions on how to better engage their peers, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. So uh, when we talk about the young students now, this is actually Generation Z. Mm, yeah, so, we are now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's hard, <laughs> We're to, about it's hard to keep track. <laughs> we're going to be starting over at the beginning in a little bit. But So we're at Generation Z. But even if you look at millennials, a little bit older, um, they are now actually paying for subscriptions, online subscriptions, which a few years ago we heard, that will never happen. You know, right. you're never going to get online subscriptions. And we're seeing more, more of them willing to actually pay for news, yes. for inf quality information. It's very encouraging. So it's, a, and it's an encouraging sign. And then also, to your point, Stan, you, you know how jobs are being shed. That is true, and a lot of print jobs are being shed, and mm -hmm. I think you know it's it's a terrible thing. However, there's also a lot of opportunity. You see a lot of these digital jobs yes. being created. You know these startups that are just yeah. online, um, and, and that's also entrepreneurial endeavors. Entrepreneurial, People right? You can start your own. And you absolutely doing their own multimedia YouTube and a blog and you got creating it. their own little uh, platform. Y exactly, you got it. And you know we don't have necessarily uh, a complete just gatekeeper of who can do journalism now. It's really opened up, and if you, hopefully if you do quality journalism and you have, like you said, an entrepreneurial mm. mindset, you'll be able to have your own new site and create your own, you know, and be able to cover stories that you think are important for, for the community and for society. And we invited Maureen Krata, who's the uh, journalism dean over at UConn, mm -hmm. to come on. She had a conflict, but she did send this email to me. I wanted you to read her comment and what she thought sure. about this surge and whether it's uh, tied to the Trump effect or what have you. Here are her thoughts here, Maureen Krata from UConn. She said, I would hesitate to say that Trump is having an effect here. I can say with certainty, though, that the level of engagement is markedly different among students. They are very connected to the news out of Washington and are constantly in touch with news updates through social media. They are keenly aware of the danger of, quote, fake news and of the need for the American people to have accurate information. There's a sense of mission among students that reminds me of the Watergate era. We see a lot of students who are passionate about the core goals of journalism it's an invigorating time to teach. That's got to, well, your thoughts on that comment. I mean, I think that's very wise, and that even goes to my to my point I was saying earlier, where, you know, you even see some of the studies they've done on Generation Z, this mm. new generation, and unlike other generations that were are very driven by money, you know, this generation are a bunch of good doers, right? They, they want it, they feel this need to change the world, to, ha to have some kind of justice, mm. right? And so, we again, we, we connect it and we think, well, what is a profession that can do that? And it's journalism. So it starts to make sense. You know, you have this generation, just like from that email that you read, saying that they, they feel like they want to do good and they want to do positive. And so we can say, you know, Trump, is that the reason? I don't know. Mm. But they just see this cl climate that I think we can all admit right now is very divisive, mm. right? And, and they want to make a difference. And this is a way that many think that they can make a difference. It's refreshing. For those of us who are passionate about journalism and media, it's refreshing because mm -hmm. there was a time not so long ago where young folks in college were not really engaged with the news. They weren't reading newspapers, weren't reading anything online, didn't really know a lot about current events, and it was discouraging. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of uh, interesting. And the fact you and I have talked about this new sort of trend of fake news and all the different technologies now where you can manufacture video to make it look real when it's not. Mm -hmm. If young people are beginning to understand the art of discerning, you know, what's true and what's not and checking facts, that's good for the next generation to have at least a more uh, thoughtful and discerning you know, viewership or readership. Right. I think I think you you nailed it there is that, you know, they're they're savvy to that. There is real fake news out there. Mm. And, but it's not every piece of information, right? And so they still need a little training. They need a little guidance of exactly how do you find quality sources. These are the things that we've talked about before. But they at least have that sense that, yeah, there is a lot of manipulation out there. And we need to find information that's going to, you know, better our lives and that we can really trust and, and uh, you know, have a, a shared set of facts. So like, like we were just saying, this is very encouraging, mm. I think, to see that this uptick and that this fact that there is this, this willingness to want to engage and learn, uh, you know, learn from, from quality sources. Yeah, one thing that could be concerning mm -hmm. is anonymous sources, right? We see that we're teaching young people, you know, there's a fine line between when to use anonymous sources, how to use it, mm -hmm. who to trust. So when you see a New York Times publish an anonymous op-ed piece which savages the Trump administration, allegedly by someone who's inside his inner circle, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what were your thoughts on that? Did, did they, uh, was that the appropriate thing to do to run an, uh, an unauthorized 
op-ed. What was the chatter with inside your school, and what did you think about it? So, I mean, Stan, you know, it's tough because you asked me this question today. I might give you one answer tomorrow. I'll give you a different one, mm. and, and it's really because of the fact that I think this is a a tough. You know, there there isn't just a clear yes, it was right or wrong to publish why this not? anonymous op-ed. Why not? Why shouldn't there be a clear answer? All right, so I'll, I'll give you the reason why not. Mm -hmm. um, because if you look at the ultimate mission of journalism, it is to to get the truth out to the public. Right, and there were some reasons that maybe that this person didn't want to become public. So the the person that published right. it, and but if you look at how newsworthy that information could be, the fact that somebody that we believe to be in the inner circle thinks that the president is incompetent, I mean that is something newsworthy. That mm -hmm. is something that the public needs to know. So the New York Times made a decision. They said this information we feel is worthy enough for the public to know, and if this is the only way that we're going to be able to get it out, if this is the, then we have to decide. Mm. Uh, real quickly, Stan. So the only let me, let me yes. chat. Sure. As, as a former columnist mm -hmm. and opinion person, and respected opinions, I, I was uh, concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Very, I, I thought it was a dangerous move because even though everyone's truth is different, and, and my thing is always, if you have an opinion and you want to say something, then you have to have the backbone to say it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you don't. You shouldn't have the comfort to be able to blast someone with anonymous sound. If you're a New York Times, if you have something as scathing as that, you have reporters there to say, hey, here's something from an anonymous source. Give it to your investigative guys. Let them go dig in and find some people. I, I thought it I thought it was a very dangerous precedent. You, and, all right, and that's great, because that's actually where I was going to. Yeah. You know, I do think it's dangerous, and here's the risk. I, again, this is something where, you, where I said, uh, maybe tomorrow you ask me, you might have just convinced me otherwise. <laughs> but, you know, if, if this source is someone from the inner circle, and when I say inner circle, I mean somebody that we all know, a name that we hear, mm -hmm. that we all know, you know, then I think that the argument can be made that in this case they felt the need to do it. If it's someone that's like a paper pusher or someone that we don't know, right. then I think I really then I think they really cross the line. Then it's the unprecedented move um, because is it really newsworthy if somebody that's three tiers down from the president is upset with him? Right. So that's where this becomes. That yeah, we can go on. We can have a whole show yeah, on it because I would say sure. if it's a senior official, then he or she has to have this fine to say they can't be afraid to lose their job because that's basically what we're saying that. Mm -hmm. Person want to lose their jobs, therefore give them the comfort of blasting someone un anonymously. I think if you're that senior and official, um, just come out and do you it. Come out and have some guts. Stan, we, have, we have to continue this. We have because to I think we can do a little me. volley. Yeah, back and, and, and they're wrapping me up now. Right so we'll have to have you back out for this thing. <laughs> right. All right, folks, we're gonna come back and we're gonna wrap things up with a venerable community action organization that's received a 1.5 million dollar grant to tackle opiate addiction. Heidi Lubetkin from the community renewal team in Hartford is here to discuss. You are watching the Stan Simpson Show. So, two more semesters, and then? There's a company in Texas and one in Florida I'm interviewing with. Edible Arrangements is moving to Georgia, so them too. So you're just gonna leave all your friends and family, never to be heard from again? Mom, I would stay if I could, but there's nothing here for me. I'm going where the jobs are. Under Governor Malloy, businesses have left Connecticut because of high taxes. So. Who's replacing Malloy? I hope not Ned Lamont. He's like Malloy third term. He's just doubling down. Definition of insanity. <sighs> Doing the same thing over and over and hoping for a better result. Dan Malloy and Ned Lamont. More tax, more waste, more debt, more failure, more of the same. Paid for by Change Pack. This message was made independent of any candidate or political party. goodness we weren't home. I mean, who knows what would have happened? In your home, you should always feel protected. Call the number on your screen right now to receive a complete wireless home security system, including monitoring, starting at just $27.99 per month. ADT has helped protect over 8 million families with 24-7 fast response. And with Protect Your Home's same-day installation, you can be connected today. Call now to help protect your home and receive a complete home security system with ADT monitoring starting at just $27.99 per month. And when you call now, the next 25 orders will receive a $100 Visa gift card. See what people are saying. Get the protection you deserve. Call right now to receive this complete wireless home security system and your $100 Visa gift card. Don't delay. Call now. 
Welcome back to the show. Heidi Lubetkin from the Community Renewal Team in Hartford is here to discuss a $1.5 million federal grant to help tackle the opiate problem. Welcome, an important organization. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for inviting us. So what are we going to do with this problem? Hartford has one of the highest rates of opiate overdoses in the state. Number three, I believe, in the state, and Connecticut is number in top the top ten. ten in the country, Correct. right? Yes. This is a bad, profound problem. It is. Why is CRT on this? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, thank you for inviting Absolutely. us to come and talk tonight. And so CRT is your neighborhood community action agency um, located in Hartford. And what we do is to really participate in making sure that we fill the gaps. And obviously, in looking at the statistics, the opioid epidemic is definitely a gap fill that we need to do. Mm. Um, and so we applied for a grant through SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration, to find out if we can enhance and expand what we currently provide in the communities. CRT owns and operates three behavioral health clinics already in Hartford, all one and a half miles from so each other. So you see the problem firsthand. Absolutely. You see down there on the ground there. Absolutely. So People come right into our services every day. So how will this money help? Because the opiate issue, if you trace it back, it starts with someone abusing prescription drugs at some point yeah. and going from there to the opiate situation, not necessarily all the time, but at some point there's an introduction to someone's dealing with pain, they're on prescription drugs, the drugs end, they find some other alternatives and they go to the opiates. Okay. So how do you stop that that sort of need to go to the opiates? What can be done to stop that? We have that? to meet people where they're at, wherever they are in whatever situation they're at with no judgment. And, and CRT's opening the doors to do that. So with this grant, with this $1.5 million, we're gonna be able to tackle this with an expansion. We currently provide those services in our behavioral health clinics at 330 Market Street in mm -hmm. particular, but now we can expand by enhancing the medications that we can provide, particularly with Suboxone, um, and having also- okay, what is that? So that's a-, a Suboxone is a medication that will help with the cravings and with the addiction um, for either the prescribed opioids that people obviously get um, right. addicted to or unfortunately the the illegal medication illegal drugs that people unfortunately yeah. get addicted to as well you know one thing I found really interesting with this whole issue is that we look to blame sometimes society where does this problem come from is it the manufacturers is it with this or the other it seems to me as this before we had a doctor right here dr. Craig Allen the doctors have to share mm -hmm. the large chunk of this mm -hmm. blame right Absolutely. they're the ones prescribing these very toxic painkillers. And I didn't realize, Dr. Allen told me this, doctors are not trained in mm -hmm. pain management. Yeah. They, they, they have no experience in that. Right. They basically, it's kind of a trial situation. Yeah. They give it to you and they get good feedback. Right. They give it some more because they're saying, well, the, the end local evidence is that we, they, they like this, so we keep giving it, but they aren't really trained right. in how much to give. It's right. kind of trial and error. I find that to be startling. Well, think about when you go to the doctors, right? You go to the doctor with a symptom or an ailment. The doctor is not there to do much then to help with that symptom or with that ailment. Right. And so we do those things not necessarily in a pre preventative manner, right? And so we have that symptom and we put a medication on it and hope that that resolves it. Right. And in some cases, maybe a short-term medication can help to resolve that. But unfortunately, it has Compound. an addictive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because the idea is you want to try to help the patient mm -hmm. take them out of pain. But sometimes by right. taking them out of pain, yeah. You're exacerbating the problem. Right. I think this is where this opiate issue is. So when does it start? We have about 15 seconds. When does the money come in? And what's the first two things you're going to do? Two specifics. In about 15 seconds, break us down. What do you want? Absolutely. Do? So the money's here. We're we're open. You're ready to go. And we're <laughs> absolutely. We want to help people change their lives right. each and every day. And so anyone can drop in at 3:30 Market Street or, or call us at 860-761-7900. Come in the door and say I need help. Okay. You're also dealing with uh, ex-offenders as a key population. Absolutely. Those coming out of prison. Absolutely. Who have and okay. we have HCC down the street from us, Hartford, HCC Correctional, okay. Cent uh, Hartford Correctional Center. Right. We also work with uh, state and federal um, corrections. We want to help men, but we also want to help women. All right, thanks for your time. Heidi Lebutkin from CRT. Thanks for your time. Don't forget to catch our show on your own time. Fox61.com slash Dan. Friend us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Folks, i got to say goodbye to my producer. Chelsea Freeman is leaving. She's going to a different market, bigger and better things. Thank you for all your help over the past year. For the good folks here at Fox61, I'm Stan Simpson. The morning news is next. Dental insurance. Many employers don't offer it. Medicare doesn't include it. And people who work for themselves often don't consider it. But with Humana, you can still have it, starting at just $17 a month. That's less than 60 cents a day. Call today for a free quote. 
With the Humana Dental Plan, you'll get 100% coverage for in-network preventive care, such as oral exams, cleanings, and x-rays. Plus, you'll save on fillings, crowns, and other dental procedures. And you can't be turned down because of age or pre-existing conditions. With a large network of dentists and specialists and a variety of affordable plans, you're sure to find one to fit your family's needs and budget. Plus, Humana has vision plans, too, with coverage for exams, eyeglasses, and more. How much could you save? There's a quick, easy way to find out. Call Humana now at 1-877-275-9844 for a free quote and discover the coverage you need at a price that'll make you smile.